I'd like to discuss interaction effects, modeling interaction effects in multiple regression. Multiple regression uh, in, in its basic guise, its basic uh, personality, is a linear additive technique. It assumes that the effect of each independent variable is the same at all values of the other independent variables in the model. For example, in the in example that we've been uh, tracing through this chapter, in the education battleground turnout example, multiple regression assumed that the effect of education on turnout, which we found to be in the multiple regression of 0.55, is the same for battleground and non-battleground states. That's fine if you, have, if you had an, uh, an additive uh, set of relationships or if you're trying to uh, ferret out spurious relationships. But if the effect of one independent variable on the dependent variable depends on the value of another independent variable, then you have interaction going on and you have to figure out how to model it and accommodate that effect in the regression model. In multiple regression, we refer to interaction effects. An interaction effect occurs when the effect of an independent variable cannot be fairly summarized by a single partial effect. Instead, the effect varies depending on the value of another independent variable in the model. Now let's introduce a new example. This is survey data. I believe this is the American National Election Study. Uh, think of a dependent variable uh, measuring abortion opinions among a large group of respondents. The scale scores range from zero. This would be uh, the respondent who took the most anti-abortion position to nine, with the most pro-abortion position. And so we're going to calculate mean values of this, this dependent. And we're going to examine uh, the effect of party identification on these mean values. Independent variables, party identification, it'll take on three values, Democrat, Independent, and Republican. The control variable here is political knowledge. Uh, this is going to be uh, eventually modeled as a dummy, but it takes on two values. Respondents either are classified as having low politi political knowledge or high political knowledge. Let's look at a familiar friend first. This is uh, a mean comparison analysis of this problem. Mean pro-choice scores by partisanship controlling for political knowledge. Let's look at the effect of partisanship among low knowledge respondents. Uh, low knowledge Democrats scored 4.3 on this scale. It, it does go down, goes down to 3.7 among independents and down to 2.9 among Republicans. So, if you are just summarizing the effect of partisanship for, for low knowledge respondents, you would say, well, the scale drops 1.4 points across the range of the independent variable. You know, is it just going in the hypothesized direction? Yes. Is it, a, is it a noticeable effect? Yes, it is. But let's compare that effect to the effect of partisanship among high knowledge respondents. Uh, here, high knowledge Democrats are at 5.7 on this scale, drops to 4.6 among independents, and then to 2.8 among Republicans. So the effect here is twice as strong than it is among low knowledge respondents. So among high respondents, high knowledge respondents, the, the effect of partisanship is 2.9. There's a drop of 2.9 points across the values of, of partisanship. Uh, you might also notice uh, that the effect of knowledge for Democrats is rather pronounced. Democrats go from no, low knowledge to high knowledge. Their uh, scale scores go from 4.3 to 5.7, over a point and a half, uh, about a point and a half increase here. Uh, if you look down here at Republicans, the effect of knowledge is, is virtually nothing, 2.9 to 2.8. So the effect of knowledge depends on partisanship, and the effect of partisanship depends on knowledge. We have a lot of interaction going on in this, in this data. Here it is graphically. This really tells the story, doesn't it? Here's that low knowledge line dropping about what, what 1.4 or so across values of partisanship. And here's a much more steeply uh, raked uh, line among high knowledge respondents. So it's almost like uh, when you reach into the data and, and switch knowledge from low to high, the relationship really uh, 
becomes very well behaved and, and becomes quite a bit stronger. Let's figure out how to model this in regression. Now, here's the formal model. Y hat's going to be, of course, the uh, estimate of, of abortion opinions. Uh, let, let's look first, in fact, let's look first at how these variables are coded. That will give us a clue as to how they're going to behave when we, uh, when we manipulate their values. Uh, y hat, of course, is the estimated pro-choice uh, scale score. Partisanship now is going to be coded zero for Democrats, so all the Democrats are going to have zero on partisanship, one for independents, and two for Republicans. So this, ra this range of this variable is from zero, from zero to two from Democrat to Republican. Uh, the high knowledge of dummy, is a, that's, that's a dummy variable. It's coded one for respondents who have high political knowledge and zero for respondents with low pol political knowledge. So we've got a dummy variable in there. And it, w when, you, when you model interaction, I've discovered, it's always a helpful idea to have your variables scaled to zero because if, if like the Democrats are zero, we know certain terms in the model are gonna drop out uh, and it makes it easier to interpret the coefficients. So, A hat is going to estimate the abortion scale for low knowledge Democrats. Why is that? Well, partisanship is zero for Democrats, so this term drops out. High knowledge is zero because they're low, they're low knowledge uh, respondents. And so the, what's called the interaction term also drops out. So the, sort of the base value is captured by A hat is going to be uh, the uh, scale score for low information Democrats. Now, in fact, for all low information respondents, we can use these uh, linear additive building blocks to figure out the effects of uh, first partisanship among low knowledge individuals and then the base effect of, of, uh, of the high knowledge dummy. Here's the difference. This is what's called an interaction term. Notice that the interaction term is going to take on a value of zero for uh, uh, Democrats. It's going to take on a value of one for independents, and it's going to take about on a value of two for Republicans. So this is a way of telling us, B3 is going to tell us how much to adjust the effect of partisanship uh, when knowledge increases from zero to one. And here are the estimates, and, and the, the format for this uh, table is actually what you're more going to be familiar with looking at a computer output. It's different from the other formats in this chapter, but this is a much more common way of, uh, of, of presenting uh, regression results. All right, let's see what we have here. The constant is 4.33. This, then, will be the scale score for low-information Democrats because partisanship drops out. High knowledge doesn't occur because it's low information, and therefore the interaction term is also zero. Now, if we use the constant A hat and partisanship, which was, which was a B1 in the model, we can figure out the effect of partisanship for low information uh, respondents. 4.3, and then it, it, if you increase to low information independence, you reduce the scale by 0.7 to low information Republicans, reduce it by another 0.7. So it drops, as we found, about 1.4 points across values of a partisanship for low information individuals. Uh, here's that high knowledge dummy. A, a common mistake in modeling interactions is, is forgetting to put in the base effect of the, uh, of the interaction variable, the one that you, th you think is, 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 uh, is causing the interaction. The base effect here is 1.5. This is going to be the amount that we add to low information Democrats. Why? Well, uh, low information Democrats get 4.3. Uh, the partisanship uh, dummy is still going to be zero because uh, Democrats are zero. And so 1.5 is going to be the boost in the scale score when you just when you switch uh, low information Democrats to high information Democrats. And we already saw that, I think, in the mean comparison table. Uh, high information Democrats were at something like 5.8 or, or, or roughly 5.8 on the scale, which would be those two. Now, here's the interaction term. The interaction term says that uh, as knowledge, when knowledge switches from zero to one and as partisanship goes up, you subtract an additional 0.76 points from the scale for each uh, value increase in partisanship. So, uh, Everybody gets the base effects, 0.433 minus 0.17 as we go up in partisanship, and then the minus 0.76 tells you how much more to reduce that effect. 
Uh, looking over here, all these effects are very nice. We have uh, uh, relatively small standard errors. Partisanship has a strong T statistic, minus 4.67, significant at 0 0.000. The same for high knowledge. Uh, that has a significant effect. And then the interaction effect also lights up. This is telling us that, yeah, uh, the, the effect of partisanship for high knowledge response is significantly stronger. It's still negative, but it's significantly stronger uh, for high knowledge respondents. Just to repeat, you, you use A hat and B one hat to estimate the effect of partisanship for low knowledge respondents. B one hat says to subtract 0.7 for each one unit increase in party, or minus 0.1, I'm sorry, yeah, minus 1.4 across the, the, the full range of party. So you subtract 0.7 as you go from Democrats to, to independents, another 0.7 when you go to, uh, to Republicans. So uh, regression linearizes these differences. Use the base effect of knowledge, B2 hat, and the interaction term, B3 hat, to adjust the base estimates for high knowledge respondents. B3 hat, uh, that's our interaction workhorse, says to subtract an additional 0.76 for each one unit increase in party, or across the full range of party, uh, minus, uh, minus 1.52 across the full range of party. So uh, 0.76 from Democrat to Independent, and another 0.76 from Independent to Republican. High knowledge respondents get the base effect, okay, so that we already know that uh, uh, partisanship is having an effect among low knowledge, plus the interaction effect, which is another minus 1.52. And of course, this works out very nicely when you add those, uh, uh, those effects together. You find uh, the, the full effect for high knowledge respondents is minus 2.9. Uh, these, it should say these results match the differences in the mean comparison table.